Hey guys, Brent Hole Build Show, talking about the federal style today. Remember, we're in this whole series studying rooms, right? Georgian rooms, federal rooms, Greek revival, right? We did the Georgian style, now we're doing the federal style. It's next chronologically. We're gonna be looking at uh, what makes it federal, right? How do you tell? Maybe you've had clients who've come up to you and said, uh, I need a colonial style house, or I want a traditional style house, or I want a federal style house, right? But then they show you the pictures and it's really not, <laughs> right? So today we're gonna be digging into what makes the federal style the federal style today on The Build Show. So what is federal, right? Remember, the Georgian period comes before it. It's named after King George, right? King George was the, uh, the king in England, right? We are associated with that up until about 1780, which is the end of the Revolutionary War. We are now our own country. We want to have our own style, right? We call it the, it's called today the federal style, right? Um, the influence that came over actually from England, so we were still influenced by them, was it by an architect named Robert Adam. And, then, and in England, the style is called Adam-esque after Robert Adam. Now what happened was Robert Adam, when he was on his grand tour studying these buildings in Rome, they, they discovered that there was this ancient city called Pompeii, which had been uh, covered in ash by this volcano eruption, and they were rediscovering this city, right? And he went down to Pompeii and looked at it and realized that what they thought was the uh, interiors of Rome, right, the homes and how they were decorated was very different than in actuality. So this city that had been covered in ash and then reopened up, they were now looking freshly at the mosaics and at the, uh, the way they did moldings and the way they did decoration. And all of a sudden, you know, his mind got blown and he completely changed the way decoration was happening at this time. So the federal style, the Adam X style, is a rediscovery of the classical traditions and a rediscovery of, of how to design. So the federal style really takes after that. And if you look at Robert Adams' rooms, right, if you look at the houses and the rooms that he created, they're incredibly colorful because the rooms in Pompeii were very colorful. And there's pinks and greens and reds and all these wild different colors. The decoration is very different. And we see those elements and those details as we look at federal style houses in America. So we're actually gonna be looking at rooms from Winter Tour. Now, Winter Tour, right, is the DuPont family home. It was an area where he started collecting American interiors. He actually bought rooms and installed them in his house. There's about 14 federal style rooms in Winter Tour, and they're really distinctive. They come from all over the country, Maryland and Massachusetts and all the, all the colonies, all the original states are represented here. So it's a great cross section of the federal style in America. And we can study these rooms and study these details to really understand what federal is. Now, uh, the first room we're going to do is the blue room, right? The blue room is uh, where Mrs. DuPont slept, right? And you walk in and immediately know it's federal. Now, how do you do that? So maybe the best way to tell the difference between the federal and the Georgian style is to show you two, right? And here's a cornice, right? Here is a, uh, goes right up at the top of the ceiling of a Georgian cornice, right? Um, now compare that to a federal cornice, right? This is from the federal parlor at Winter Tour. Both rooms have basically the same height and notice how these moldings change, okay? The cymation, the top molding. Look how much bigger the Georgian molding is than the federal molding. The corona, which is that next piece, this one actually has this decoration, this gouge carving right over the modillion. Notice the scale of the modillion is smaller, right? And then the bed mold, right? Notice the bed mold, the shape of this molding. So what we're beginning to see here, the three key differences that the difference between federal and Georgian. One, the size and the scale of the moldings really change, okay? The, they shrink in size, okay? They're not as massive. And that's part of what Robert Adam discovered there was that the scale of moldings and the scale of decoration inside Pompeii was much smaller. Second thing is the shape of the moldings is changing, right? You see that bed mold between the, between the Georgian and the federal and how different they are. And that the shape was really changing the way you read it, okay? And then the decoration, right? This inventiveness that, that is taking place with this gouge carving. And we're going to look at this decoration in the federal style as being a real key definitive detail. Let me show you some of these key details that take place between the Georgian and the federal style. If we look at this and this, just say this is the Georgian and this will be the federal over here. Um, the cornice, okay, that top part uh, of the entablature is, is, is drawn like this. You've got the cymation, 
you've got the corona, you've got a bed mold, right? And then your freeze down here. But this typically is on a 45 degree angle, okay? That's kind of how the books are show it. That's the canon, right? And that's how it's laid out. If you look at that blue room cornice, you've actually got a really funny little cornice here that does this. Whoa! And then uh, a bed mold back here, okay? So what you have is the three parts are the same, right? You have your cymation, your corona, and your bed mold, right? Those three parts. And here, there's your cymation up there, okay? Here's your corona, right? But they've introduced this big soffit. And at the, at the blue room, you'll notice that these, that these are actually fluted, right? And then your bed mold's back here. So all three parts, right? The bed mold, bed mold, right? Corona, corona, and then cymation, and then cymation, right? All the parts and pieces are still there, but now it is expressed differently, right? The invention of this thing um, it is different. Notice what happens too in the, in the uh, door casings, right? So if we uh, have a door case on the wall and I cut it and look down at the top of it, you know, a Georgian one will have this big bulbous shape like this, a little cyma, and then a bead, right? And as we looked at some of these things, that can be three inches tall. The scale of this thing is big. Um, the shape of it is based off a circle, okay? The, in the federal period, moldings change. And, you know, the bed, the bed mold or the, the door casing here becomes, um, I don't want to say about two inches thick, okay? But notice the shape of these things, okay? That the, that, and this is kind of getting into molding theory, which is a little bit geeky, but this is the way that um, uh, this is based on an elliptical shape or an egg shape. And so our molding is taken out, of, taken out of a shape like this, whereas this one is based off a circle. Now, what that means is, is that the shadow lines are completely different. What that means is the way it expresses itself is different. If I have a molding that does this, I have a molding that projects into the room. If I have a molding that does this, okay, and it's cut out, right, it's not as expressive. It's softer, right? And so federal moldings either end up having this egg shape or they have that elliptical shape, right? They take it this shape, that cavetto, right, in an elliptical shape, and it's a softer light. So you may think that that's a real geeky, way of looking at things or, or who really notices, but you do notice. And if you walk into a Georgian room, it feels heavy. Everything feels heavy. And in fact, when we're talking to people about building traditional houses, Georgian and federal, we'll build samples of both, but typically they are liking the federal look because it's just softer, it's daintier, it's, it's nicer. So you're seeing that um, the shape is changing, right? You certainly see that in that corona and the, the cornice of the blue room, right? These, the cymation is very different than that typical Georgian cymation. The, the shape is different, right? The size and the scale is different. It's not as big and beefy. And it, the decoration, in this case, the fluted soffit there, um, is very different. So um, all of those things are taking place, right, that helps you read the room differently, and it's a different expression. And if you're gonna be a master builder, right, if you're gonna be able to understand and go help your clients really build special houses is you really need to understand that level of detail. If there's one characteristic that walking into a federal room, you know immediately it's federal, it's the exaggerated size of the freeze and the decoration that happens there. Let me show you what I'm talking about. There's, there's two rooms at Winter Tour that come from the same house that are different periods, right? Jonathan Bowers built a house in Massachusetts, very wealthy man, built a Georgian style house in the 1740s. His son inherits his dad's wealth and <laughs> proceeds to blow it all, uh, but builds a really nice room in the meantime. Um, this mantle is in the Bowers Park Winter Tour. You'll notice that we've got this very federal style frieze in this Georgian room. Look at those panels in that room. Very simple, very clean, not very ornamented, right? And then you have this very interesting mantle that sits over top of a blection molding around a fireplace, right? There is no mantle shelf in that room, very Georgian. They add this mantle shelf over top of it, and it has these pretty scrolls on the other side. It has this decorated frieze, right, where we've got these panel, applied panel mold. Notice the, the dentals, an eye dental, it's a weaving eye dental. There's a gouge carving there in the corona. All these different details and decorations, part of that period. 
Now, if you go to the Somerset room, which is also a winter tour, from the same house, you wouldn't recognize it, right? It has this beautiful elliptical arch, elliptical arch, very popular in that period, fan lights, think those over, over doors. And notice the decoration that's happening here and the details and the fluting and how light and dainty it is, right? So the federal style is very different from the Georgian style. The size and the scale and the shape of these moldings is changing. And let's dial in on that decoration that takes place in the mantel shelves and over doorways uh, in this decorated frieze and that inventiveness that's taking place in this federal period. So talking about that distinctive design in the frieze, right? That exaggerated size of the frieze and then the decoration that goes in there. You see swags and urns and all di different kinds of decoration. It's because they invented a, a design motif or a design material called compo, okay? Or composition moldings. And basically compo is like sawdust, molasses, and animal hide glue. And what's still made today, Decorator Supply still makes it, but you can, uh, use it and you steam it onto the wood, right? And this is an historic product that was used in that period. And we see it all over winter tour, all during this federal period in the freeze of these openings. Now, I wanna look at China Hall and show you this kind of beautiful decorated area over top of this doorway, okay? So China Hall has is federal, right? We know it because of this decoration in the side, but we especially see it in this area here, right? Here's your architrave, right, right there. Here's your frieze in there, and then there's your cornice, right? Notice the decoration and the fine detail that's happening here. But now you see this, this kind of, these flower detail, these little swags that come across. Notice these decorative urns right here, right? All of these details that happen in the federal period in this area right here. You see it over mantles in the blue room. You see it all over winter tour. It's kind of the, one of those distinctive styling details that helps you know it's federal when you walk into a room. So that's the federal style, right? Notice that the three main differences are the size of the moldings change, the shape of the moldings is a little bit different, and then the inventiveness, this decoration, especially in that freeze, really happens during this period. I want to thank my sponsors, Cucum Brothers and Windsor, Windsor Mill. Uh, both companies support great design and great moldings. I design moldings for both companies. If you want to know more about Georgian and federal style rooms, be sure to pick up my book, Traditional American Rooms. I wrote it with my friend Christine Frank, uh, studying these historic rooms at Winter Tour, studying the stylistic differences, and you really see uh, because there's cutaways of moldings and, and the size of rooms, so the scale of all those things really works out. Follow me on Instagram, Hull Millwork, Hull Homes. A lot of behind the scenes stuff going on there. Sign up for our newsletter. I'm Brent Hull. Thanks for watching.